Hi everyone and welcome to the next video. I'm not sure what we're going to edit into this. It's going to be a little bit patchy I think, but we'll get it right on the next one. Uh, the main reason being is we've just noticed that all the recording that I've been doing over the past week and a bit um, is all corrupt. It won't save to the um, iPad or some of it won't. So a lot of the engine bits and bobs don't make sense. So we're going to put something on this video. We're going to show a few bits now and um, yeah, hopefully next time it will be a bit better. So the first job that I thought I would show is a stud removal. I've already, sh I've already filmed the beginning of it, but there we are. Um, it's for actually, it's for a snap on breaker bar. It's a 36 inch half inch drive breaker bar and the customer couldn't undo this 30 Torx. In fact, I couldn't even undo the 30 Torx. I broke two 30 Torxes trying to, trying to get it out. And this was mainly to replace this square drive here. So I've got a repair kit for it, which comes with a new pin, a spring washer, and a new drive. Uh, so what I need to do is re remove the damaged pin, tap the square drive out, and then put it all back together. So I've managed to get a hole all the way through as you can see my finger through there um, which was quite tricky actually because um, it's a hardened pin that, or a hardened screw that goes through there so the next thing that I'm going to do is use one of my snap-on tapered stud extractors which are, I don't always like these because what happens with these is the tighter you squeeze that in it on a normal stud, it it makes the studs like spell out, um, spray out, and it bites onto whatever it's stuck into harder. But with something like a hardened screw, they're actually quite effective. So the thing to do is to get it in like that, then just give the tool a tap, and it it helps the first few threads bite in. And then from that, you can just unscrew it now. I have already undone this, I've put it all back together so I can show you how I remove things like that. Um, but I had already done it, it just, the, like I said, the, the file was corrupt. Uh, and then we can unscrew it like that. And it must have been tight here somewhere. And then once that's unscrewed, we can wiggle this part off. Oop clip's gone flying I just saw it go down here somewhere oh now there's a clip yeah so the clip's even rusty as well so I think it had all just seized up so from there we just open the repair kit and then put in the damaged spring Um, put in the damaged screw, just got a hole through it now. And then this part, the broken drive, that's just held in there with a sprung ball bearing. So it's just a case of tapping it out, hopefully. There we go. So that's the broken drive. So that can go in the bag as well. And then what I'll do with that is just staple it back together and then that can go back. And then I hit the new drive in, the small ball bearing goes into the housing. Put the new split washer in there. And then basically just wiggle the new part back in and then tighten that up so the other problem I've got is I broke all my Torx bits on doing this so I've got to use a cheap screwdriver but because it's got dry Loctite on it only has to be nipped anyway and then the dry Loctite does the job and locks it in but there we go that's all back together so I can give that back to the customer tomorrow well, next time I see him and he's got his bar fixed and the broken bits go through the snap-on warranty system. 
And this is one of the main reasons why I buy Snap-on 2 because the Snap-on um, lifetime warranty just means that when I buy tools, if they break, we, we fix them. It's no problem. As long as we've got the original proof of purchase, then they, they honour the deal. So it's, uh, it's really good. So I thought I would just quickly run through some of the jobs that I've done, which we've, we have recorded the data for, but it's gone. One of them is this BSA barrel, which I've reboard. The guy supplied a new old stock piston and then I've bored it to suit, took his studs out. So that's ready to go back to him. I've also had a Cosworth cylinder head, which I'm gonna do a completely separate video on. So this is coming for full reconditioning, new valve guides and bits and bobs like that. So we've just had this cylinder head come in for a pressure test in the skim. This belongs to the best garage in Bracknell. Bailey's garage. So Dan's cylinder head is quite bad, it's skimming quite neat off this corner and this corner of the cylinder head but it hasn't touched here and you can see well you can actually feel where it's uh, sank in the cylinder head so I should imagine it's going to have a chunk off it. Anybody in the Bracknell area needing their car fixed, get to Bailey's Garage. So the next job in is a flywheel for a local garage, which I did record the start of this, but for some reason with the corrupt data on the GoPro, um, I've lost it. So all we've got is the time-lapse machine in. This part is, I'm just roughing out the flywheel. The flywheel was in a bad state, but my customer, I recommended he replace the flywheel, but he couldn't get one for four weeks. So the only option was to make it as good as we could really. So this part here is just roughing out and trying to get rid of the hard spots out the flywheel. Um, the cracks in there was quite deep. So we, we would have had a job to get rid of them all, but it took out the, the minor ones all the hard spots disappeared virtually because it's a step flywheel I can't grind it I have to do it on the lathe um, the step that I'm measuring there is quite important it's 40 thou that it needs to be so one mil so what I'm doing there is just measuring just to just to take the right amount off the outer part of the flywheel to give me my 40 thou step for the for the clutch to work correctly um, that there was the final cut and then I was just giving it a quick measure to make sure that I was at 40 thou. Right, so that's the flywheel all done, ready for my customer. Whoops, I had to take, uh, what was it? I had to take 45 thou off that in total and I've put a 40 thou step back on it. So all I've got to do now is just tap the dowels in and then wait for him to collect it but it definitely looks a sight better than it did when he dropped it off so now i'm going to be moving on to some more cylinder head work which i'll uh i'll film some of that So that's the BMW head completely refaced and uh, and looking very nice. Um, I mean, I haven't showed any of this job yet, so I'll um, I'll go over to the other workshop and show the rest of the the work that we're doing to this. Um, I've got to cut the seats on on the cylinder head. I've already shot blasted the valves, so I've got to face the valves now. And then we've done a little bit of work to the bottom end. I've completely balanced the bottom end. And I was absolutely amazed actually on how far out the pistons and rods were. 
Um, I, met, I weighed them first as a complete unit and they was four grams out. So I thought I'd better strip them and do them properly. So then I, I weighed the piston and end-to-end -end balanced the rods. And, and everything was, was really far out. In fact, one of the con rods was five grams out. So that must have had the lighter rod uh, piston on it. Um, so by the time I had to machine five of the pistons and then five of the con rods to get the weight perfect, but they're well within um, a gram now of each other. So um, what I'll do is we'll go over to the other workshop and, and have a look at the rest of this job. So this is the bottom end um for the 24 valve bmw this is an m54 engine and i've lightened all the pistons on the skirt there all bar one so i've got them all within 0.3 of a gram and then the conrods it was mainly out at the small end part of the conrod so I've got them all in balance by just nibbing metal away from that part of the small end. And they're all bang on as well, 572 grams. So what I'm doing now is just gapping the rings and then fitting the pistons back onto the connecting rods and then just uh, fitting the, the pistons. I've honed the block and I've refaced the block as well. And then the crank is uh, it's down there so I've just got to go and give that a clean and then that's ready to refit and I think this is actually going to be the last engine that we're going to do in my old engine build room so I think now the other engine build room is nearly set up um, that that's going to be it everything else is going to get carried over over to the other side so yeah um, strange really So that's the BMW M54 engine uh, done, what I need to do to it anyway. So just a quick rundown of what I've done. Balance the crankshaft assembly, um, stripped the pistons from the conrods and then balanced everything individually because there was, there was big, a big difference. Uh, so that was pretty desperate for that to be done. Um, glaze bust the bores with a honer, refaced the block face which is aluminium with steel liners, so that has to be ground. So I'm really happy with the finish on that. Sam did that actually, so he did a really good job of that. The whole thing went in the acid to clean up because it was quite um, quite oily, burnt old oil on there. And then the cylinder head has been stripped. No, in fact, the customer stripped it. The valves have been shot blasted and refaced. The stem's polished. It's got a diamond head finish on it. Uh, it was a little bit warped in the middle, so that's all sorted and then multi-angle valve seats, and then the valves have been recut and then washed and built back up. So the only other thing that's been done is the flywheel, the clutch and the front pulley have been balanced as well, but the front pulley was fine, the flywheel and the clutch was both out slightly. So this is now all ready for Tom to come and collect and, uh, and we'll crack on with something else. So two videos ago, I showed this little tool here, which uh, is my Vandervel gauge. And we've had quite a few right answers, quite a few near answers and, uh, and a few misses as well. So I thought I would just go through what this does. This is probably a 70s, 80s gauge, what Vandervel made. Um, and it was for testing the Ford blocks. So I'm going to show this on this Ford Pinto, but this is for things like cross flows, Essex, Cologne, Pinto, uh, and a few other different bits and bobs. So in the factory, instead of basically scrapping blocks that was mismachined, what they would do is line bore these, the main housing, out to a 15 thou on the OD. So sometimes you could strip an engine and it would say standard, plus 015 which means it's a standard on the crank but 15 thou big on the mains or 0.4 of a mil so this tool was for engine reconditioners and they just normally had it on the shop counter and then when somebody would drop a, a block off to be machined or to have bearings they could quickly get this tool and put it into this main house in here like that now if you could see there that this tool doesn't bottom out onto these shoulders here. 
that's because it's standard. If this block was bored out or li uh, line bored out to 15 thou from factory or 0.4 of a mil, it would sit flush on these shoulders down here like that. And it was just a quick way that the engine reconditioning shop would know what bearings to get. Um, I really like this tool. I've got a couple of them, as I said before. Um, and they're just so rare now, you don't see them. So most people now, what, what, what they'd have to measure it to, to work out what's going on. And I've had a few people that have come in asking for 15 thou oversized bearings. And well, you don't normally get 15 thou oversized bearings. They come in 10, which is 0.25 almost, um, 0 0.5, 0 0.75 or 20 thou, 30 thou. Um, so yeah, to get 15 thou is quite odd. And quite a few of the younger engine reconditioners don't, don't actually even know what that bit's for uh, or, or that was available. So yeah, sadly, the older you get, the, the more the older tools play a part. But yeah, that's the answer to that question anyway. So I do want to say thanks to everyone that got involved and um, had a guess. That was, uh, that was really good here. Um, that's the end of this vlog. I hope you've enjoyed whatever we've managed to salvage out of it. I think what we're going to do is try and do a test of releasing two videos a week, but shorter videos, just to see um, what response we get from that. Um, if you could leave the word um, bearing in the comments below, that would be great. And uh, I just wanted to say thanks for viewing everyone and we'll catch you on the next video.